Hi, in this video I want to discuss the subject of um, veganism, vegetarianism, the idea of eating meat, the justifications and rationalizations of why people use that and why they rationalize eating meat when they don't realize that they don't have to rationalize, they just have to um, understand. When you rationalize, you almost become the uh, enemy when you start rationalizing why you need to eat meat and you justify it and you almost uh, do it based on a bunch of uh, fallacies and uh, false notions and un untruths. Um, uh, sort of like we were built to eat meat, um, we were forced to eat meat, um, it's something that we've been doing, we are meant to because why they're animals, you know, religious reasons, religious uh, rationalizations, um, you know, physiological rationalizations, like, oh, why do we have canine teeth, you know, obviously the cliches that you obviously hear all the time, um, we've been doing it for so long, therefore we can rationalize doing it all the time, um, and we're not really saying that you can't eat meat, we're just saying you shouldn't. And if you do, um, we may try to stop you, and we may try to at least convince you. We can only do so much to convince you. Um, but eventually, the um, the cause is going to come sweeping by. It's going to be something that takes control over when people come to their full senses and the reason when they start realizing whatever it may take, a worldwide crisis, whatever it may be, before they realize what they're doing is wrong. And we're not asking to stop eating meat. Just don't pass it on and don't rationalize. Um, eat it if you want. Try to stop yourself, and it's on uh, the um, the uh, a lot of the work is um, on the people that are trying to convince the others to not eat meat or whatever it may be. It's obviously it's on the person that's arguing uh, or trying to convince. It's up to them to do the convincing, at least to get the idea in the head for the convincing to take its seat and try to take control of the person or, or the idea in a person's mind. So it's about convincing and planting the seed, and that's obviously up to the responsibility of the person trying to spread the seed. Um, trying to convince that person because they're the ones trying to spread the idea. Therefore, the seed needs to be laid in by them, at least as an idea, and it could sprout in any way it can or be completely uh, deadened or eliminated. But the, the idea relies on the, spread, the seed spreader or the person trying to convince the other person to do what they need to do. Um, so regardless um, that and also the fact that um, if you do eat meat, you know, it's not too I mean, too much to say that if you realize it and you still can't help yourself, but living with a little guilt would not be um, something too much in my circumstance, especially if I already eat meat and I deserve whatever guilt I do get if I happen to eat and something like that. So if that's the case, I deserve whatever I um, have imposed. So if I do that, I deserve all the guilt in the world. So if I do eat some kind of uh, flesh product, I deserve whatever it may take um, to rationalize me eating it, but it's not a rationalization, it's um, making up for it. But that still doesn't take away the fact that it needs to be prevented. And that doesn't mean you can't uh, keep fighting, and that's a fight that you need to keep on fighting regardless. Um, so it's a fight that needs to be won gradually or whatever, as long as the winning is taking small steps in the right direction. Um, even if you take two steps back and five steps forward, whatever it may be, it's about a gradual increase in the right direction, and that's obviously where it's going to naturally be going, and that's the difference between the facts and what should be happening. What should be happening is in line with the facts. That doesn't mean that everything has to happen according to you, and it's going to be weeded out with you. We're just asking to have some slight obligations. Regardless of that, it's going to be heading that way, regardless for like people not having children as much. Regardless of the reasons, it's going to happen naturally in a certain way, and that's the way it's going to happen. Regardless of what we feel is right or wrong and what you feel is right or wrong, um, that doesn't mean I'm not right and you're not wrong. But wherever the um, the tendency happens to be, the tendency is going to happen to go in that direction, like not believing in a religion, moving beyond that, and not having children, um, not eating much as much meat. We're all tending towards those directions slowly but surely, gradually, um, steadily and gradually. That's going to be the thing that happens. Those are the tendencies that are going to be at least happen socially in the uh, progressing um, areas of this uh, earth. So it's happening, and it's happening um, gradually, and that's something that we, um, we're we dealing with slowly but surely. So regardless of your individual effect, it's something that's having an individual effect that's actually at work, and generally speaking, for most people. So regardless of your individual circumstance, it's something that's happening. It's a tendency that's happening. So regardless of what you're doing and what you feel the obligation towards, it doesn't matter if you do it or don't not do it. As long as you at least um, participate in one of those things, um, feeling some guilt, having a tendency, not passing it on, not rationalizing that tendency is going to stop coming and it's going to naturally go away the more we do it because the more we progress the more the more we realize that we can't rationalize and the less and less we rationalize and justify so i mean it's really about rationalization and justifications you can look at this video in any number of ways but it's a matter of just you know putting that idea to um progressing not having 
um, children, or, or at least as many children, not believing in a deity or a, a religion or a theistic religion, or not eating meat. Um, at least understand what you're doing, and if you do, feel some guilt for it. Make it worth it in the end. It doesn't fix the problem, and the problem needs to be fixed in the end. It's something that needs to be fixed, because you're only doing harm when you do it. But if you happen to do it, if you do realize it, it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of pain along on your side to make up for it. Um, at least help you realize what you're doing is wrong and help you um, change what you're doing. Um, so um, at least that, that works. And from my personal experience, it's something that is really a good way to motivate yourself to um, quit eating. So whatever you can do, yeah, a little guilt along the way. If you're having to do it, at least do that. And everything else should naturally come along with that. If that's the thing that you're, that's the tendency you're, tendency you're going towards. So that's always a good idea, at least to find one way to fit in that um, catch 22 or whatever. It's always nice to convince yourself one way or another. Sometimes it does take that internal conflict to uh, finally sway you one side or sway you over the fence. So, but yeah, a lot of justifications, a lot of the minutia that people use as victims and why it's not good enough. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't know really much else to say, but um, just read my notes real quick. Veganism, all the minutia, how exactly what you do or eat affects animals, victims, and why it's not good enough. So yeah, it's not good enough for the rationalizations. I mean, a lot of people, I mean, it really just boils down to rationalizations and why rationalizing why you eat um, certain things is not good enough. Whatever excuses, especially when they're wrong, you can rationalize and be, uh, have a point, but the rationalizations are obviously caught off by a, a catch and they're always generally wrong. You can say you haven't eaten enough or you need food and that's a rationalization. That's right, but still what you're doing is wrong. It doesn't mean that what you're doing is wrong, but just because you're in a, a bad circumstances that rationalize it to a certain extent to necess uh, create the justify uh, the necessity of something based on a particular circumstance from each a particular end does not mean that it's uh, justified it's still it's justified it's only justified a little more but it's still wrong and even if it's fully justified there's it's a matter of uh, semantics at that point but it's never justified because what you're doing is still wrong you just have a reason to do it you have more of an excuse um, but just because you have an excuse doesn't mean it's not wrong it's the right thing to do if you want to do it based on a particular circumstance, but there's objective wrongs and rights. The objective wrongs and rights is eating meat, causing suffering, unnecessary suffering. That's part of the process of um, factory farming and all those things, creating meat. Um, that's part of the suffering. That's objectively wrong, but there's obviously circumstances where, yes, um, depending on the circumstance and your subjective whatever uh, point of view, well, uh, where you're living in your body and you're experiencing the pain yourself, which is objective, um, it's it's a um, based on the circumstance. It's objective that you need that to eat, but it's still a wrong thing, and that's where the uh, more um, circumstantial kind of value thing comes in about weighing the consequences. But it's objectively wrong to um, cause suffering that way. But you would be suffering if you didn't eat. So either way, it's a matter of realizing there's objective truths in their general statements. Like yes, they're very clear statements value exists suffering is bad suffering sucks um, that's obviously a bad thing and all these other things about finding the minutia and going through it and rationalizing and understanding why you would do it regardless of the rationalization that's when you start looking into the minutia and you start looking at the nuance and that nuance um, and you start using those irrational rationalizations to at least justify the um, continued victimization based on a particular circumstance so that's where obviously that comes in um, and it's almost like subjective versus objective, but it's objective because it's still causing pain. Um, and you're still, you have to justify, but the justification and that minutia there is more like, okay, it's open for this, where, where do you go? You never really know what's more wrong, more or less. And it's, it's subjectively existing. It's just a matter of the combination of two things and weighing those things, which one is right and which one is more wrong or whatever, just making those decisions and whatever happens in the end. Um, so, uh. Uh, so I don't really know else, what else to say on the subject, but yeah, rationalizing, justifying, no need to de-rationalize, no need to justify, just recognize what you're doing, f um, 
if you need to, if you're still doing it, find some way to get yourself to stop, whatever it may take, some guilt tripping on yourself, realizing what you're doing is wrong, whatever it may take, whatever may, it may take to tip you over the edge, um, tip you over the fence to uh, convince yourself at least, or if no one else is doing it, convince yourself, or letting those seeds take control of you, and let the, the seeds of um, information or knowledge control you, and have those things be a nice influence on you to finally um, not rationalize, not justify, not pass it on, and look at it and understand what you're exactly you're doing and realize it doesn't need that. You can keep doing it. We're just saying we're trying to advocate otherwise. Um, and it's the objectively right thing to do. So in the end, because um, it's part of that process, but everything's part of the process. But that's obviously a very overt one that can be changed by a systematic change in the way that we function as a society. So it's something that we can realize. Or you can't change anything. Well, yeah, you can because you're part of that change every day. You're changing every second. You're changing every moment. So yeah, that's happening regardless, and that's a systematic change that we're on the, on the same level we are, that we can make a difference in, and we can change the suffering. It does go up and down. I mean, that's something where we can understand, we can objectively change going up, the, um, up or down. That would be going um, up positive. We'd be doing more good. It's a good thing. But it's obviously good just by the elimination of a negative, and that's the only way that we can really function. <laughs> that's the only way reality works. So regardless, that's really all there is to need to, to say on the subject, so I think that's... Um, now, obviously, like I mentioned, don't use any of those excuses and understand it's uh, we're not being as harsh as it may seem. So don't take it personally and realize you don't have to object to it by reinforcing the same ideas you had before. Just realize what you're doing and do your best to convince yourself that it's not worth it. After at least trying to, if it if all else fails, fails. So it's always a good idea to avoid that. No need to rationalize in any circumstance, but especially in these circumstances where it's more overt, such as eating meat and understanding veganism and vegetarianism and how you can obviously live with other things. Um, like, there's all sorts of foods you can eat that don't involve the body parts and the flesh of an animal being ripped apart and put into a grinder and turned into all sorts of meat products, and flesh products being split, spent out and realizing just exactly what you're eating isn't all that healthy or um, necessarily good for you. It's not really a uh, tasty and if otherwise if you're not getting conditioned a lot of these things are based on conditioning that you like them for if you weren't conditioned to these things you'd find them disgusting sort of like the jump you think the jump from eating uh eating a potato to beans say you don't like beans and eating potatoes bad i mean you like potato but beans are disgusting if say you went from eating pasta to meat It'd be just a, it'd be a bigger change because if you weren't conditioned to like it, if you weren't conditioned to like beans, the conditioning would be even worse to try to find a way to like meat if you weren't conditioned to like it to begin with because you'd look at it and you'd say, God damn, <laughs> that doesn't look too tasty or appetizing. I'm just conditioned based on societal standards and how I've looked at my the certain particular um, food products I've eaten. So all these things are kind of unnecessary. Conditioned, all of a sudden you like it. Uh, acquired taste, um, whatever it may be, but it's something that you would take a considerable jump if you weren't conditioned to like it. So if you're in condition to be a vegetarian or not to eat meat, then obviously eating meat would not be a natural thing to do. But it's not a natural thing to do, natural by uh, evolutionary standards. It's not a natural thing to do based on our part. Um, they are, their teeth aren't really used that way. And they're not really that sharp or long. I'm sorry. You can just look at a baboon's teeth. See how sharp your teeth are compared to that. Um, so anyway, regardless, I don't think there's anything else to say on it. Um, yeah, conditioning, all that stuff. Regardless, anyway, before this goes on for too long, um, I want in right there. So if there's anything else to mention on this subject, I can always mention it next time in another video. Another time, another video. So, yes, thank you, and until next time, bye.